Hi there, my name is Mike Glennie and I am so happy to invite you to Music in Motion's 22nd free online tap class. Thank you so much for joining us. Before we get started, I want to take a second to thank Everett Smith and Six Toe Tap Boards for providing this beautiful practice floor for us to dance on. And remind you that we have a $5 off promo if you just mention Music in Motion at checkout. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is I've started adding a virtual tip jar to our videos. Now, uh, please, please, please do not feel under any obligation to donate. Uh, but that being said, if you've enjoyed our videos and uh, you've taken something from our classes and you have the means to do so, uh, any donations are very much appreciated. Now, I'm very excited for today's class. Uh, I want to work today on the Shim Sham. Now, the Shim Sham is like the national anthem. No, forget that. Scratch that. The Shim Sham is like the international anthem of tap dancers. Now, this is something that you talk to tap dancers from anywhere, and there is a good chance they know this routine. Now, it, historically, it was created, or it gets the credit for being created, uh, by Dr. Leonard Reed and Willie Bryant are given it. A percussionist by the name of Willie Bryant and a tap dancer by the name of Dr. Leonard Reed. Now, we are going to get a little bit into this history before we get started, because it's important to know where these uh, historical routines come from. That being said, I want to uh, give a little bit of a disclaimer that I don't pretend to be the authority for tap history. I'm giving you the information as best as I know and as best as, been, as has been passed down to me. But if there's something that I say that uh, you know to be incorrect, please let me know. I'd love to hear and I'm always looking to expand my knowledge base for all of this. So like I said, the Shim Sham was created back in the 1920s and there's some argument on that, but for... Uh, the purposes of today, Shim Shim was created by Dr. Leonard Reed and Willie Bryant. Um, they created this as a chorus to be performed by tap dancers. Now, when I'm talking about a chorus, I'm actually talking about a certain length of music. Anyone know how long? We're talking about 32 bars of music, or 16 counts of eight for people that count that way. Now, the reason being is because your standard jazz chorus, or standard length of a fra the phrase in jazz music, is 32 bars long. Now, that being said, it's broken up into four eight-bar sections, which is the same way this routine is broken up into four eight-bar sections that are actually all time steps, which are defined as a two-bar me two measure repeated three times with a two-bar break on the end. We'll get into all that, and we've talked about it a little bit before, if you've seen our other videos, but we're going to get into it, so don't you worry at all. Now, here's the cool thing about the Shim Sham. The Shim Sham was relatively uh, beginner level. It wasn't super, super difficult by any means. But it kind of became recognized as the standard finale to any show with tap dancing in it, or any tap dance show, rather, which those shows were fairly common at the time. It was, you know, tap dance was really starting to make its mark in popular culture. And because uh, like jazz music and tap dance were kind of created together and uh, really evolved together during that time, it was so, so common to see tap dancers performing, even if you went to a club or something along that line, a bar or club, etc. So the Shim Sham became known as kind of the standard uh, finale to a show. Now, it wasn't even just the performers that would perform the Shim Sham. They would even give a call out to the audience to say, okay, if anyone in the audience knows the Shim Sham, stand up and dance with us. Stand up and do the Shim Sham with us. Come up on stage, come up wherever. And the cool part is so many people were learning to tap dance that it came to a point where it's like, okay, there's no more room on stage for more people to come up. Just like stand up in the aisles and do it. And then there was even times that there were so many tap dancers in the crowd, they said, just stand up in your seats and do it with us. Because so many people knew the Shim Sham. Everybody knew it. And that was like I said, like the national anthem of tap dancers. So I'm very, very excited to get into it with you. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. Now, the last thing I'll say before we really get into this is something to bear in mind that the transference of tap choreography over the span of 100 years that it's been since it was created works kind of the same way as a children's game of telephone, where a message starts at one student and passed on to the next and passed on to the next and passed on to the next. By the time you get around to the end, it almost sounds unrecognizable compared to what the message started with. And in many case, that, cases, that can be the same with tap dance. Now, along the way, people have tried their very, very best to maintain it as best as possible, but there are naturally going to be some differences. 
Uh, there's a really notable difference between like the East and West Coast in the U.S., where um, some people start on one, start some people start on four for some sections. So there's different variances there. Uh, I believe uh, doo -doo -doo, historically it does technically start on the four, uh, but it also depends on music in some cases too. But that's the version that we're working with today is starting on the four, and I will do my very best to teach you the most accurate version that I know of of the routine. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the people that you learned it from or your teachers are not going to do it differently. Um, and that doesn't make them wrong. It doesn't make me wrong, I hope. But um, it just means that the sources that we got our information from probably learned it slightly differently as well. So let's get into this. Some people start it with a heel. Some people start it with a stomp. I always start it with a stomp. The basis of this step is here. It goes four, a one, two, a three. Four, a one, a two, a three. One more. So this is stomp, brush step, stomp, brush step, stomp, brush ball, clean stomp, brush step. Let's do that one more time. One, two, three. Stomp, brush step, stomp, brush step, stomp, brush ball, clean stomp, brush step. The other key to this, this was created with jazz music. The 1920s were also known as a certain era of jazz music, specifically the swing era, which means, historically, the shim sham swings. It's not one and two, three and four, one and two and three and four. It's one, four, a one, two, a three, four, a one, a two, a three. So we want to think of almost pairing our sounds in groups of two, four, a one, two, a three, Four, a one, a two, a three. Four, a one, two, a three, yeah? Let's take it slow. One, two, one, two, three. Four, a one, two, three. Four, a one, a two, a three. Left foot. One, two, three. Four, a one, two, three. Four, one, two, three. Left side, again. Take it a little bit slower. Three. A one, two, a three, four, a one, a two, a three. Make sure there's no weight on those stomps. One, right then left. Four, a one, two, a three, four, a one, a two, a three. Four, a one, two, a three, four, a one, a two, a three. Third time. Four, a one, two, a three, four, a one, a two. A three, and that's just a touch at the end instead of a step. Now it's going to be really bad. Like that's really going to matter in a minute when we add the break. That being said, notice that we've taken a two-bar section, two-bar measure, repeated it three times, and then we're going to add the break. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Right? There's our two bars. And then we repeat that two more times. Then we're going to get in the break. So that's going to be kind of the same uh, structure for most of the shim shim. Let's do it one more time. One, two, a one, two, three, four, a one, two, a three, four, a one, a two, a three, four, a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, touch instead of stamp. Let's do that one more time. One, don't forget to swing. Pair your sounds off. One, two, three. Four, a one, two, a three, four, a one, a two, a three, four, a one, two, a three, four, a one, a two, a three, four, a one, two, a three, four, a one, a two, a three. Now we're going to stamp forward. Let's go over this break. It sounds like this. Stamp, go, step, hop, step, hop, step, go, in. Okay. Now, once again, this is something that a lot of people would argue is very different. Some people take it with a heel. One. Yeah? Some people take it with the hop, but then we'll jump these. Up, up. The way that I know it is, stamp, go, step, hop, step, hop, step, out, slide in. Like I said, these variances might seem small, but when we're trying to hold as true as possible to the historical choreography, Every tiny detail matters, and that's something to think of. So, 
Uh, when is we're doing this, we've got stamp, toe, step. We take stamp, toe, step. One more time. Stamp, toe, step. Again, stamp, toe, step. From there, we're thinking of skipping backwards. Hop, step, hop, step. All I'm doing, is, I'm just crossing my legs a little bit, but skipping backwards. That's all it is. We take stamp, toe, step, hop, step, hop, step. From there, we're jumping out, slide in. One more time, stamp, toe, step, hop, step, hop, step, out, in. Stamp, toe, step, hop, step, hop, step, out, in. One more time. One, two, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Sorry, I counted half time there. One more time. One, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Make sense one more time. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, and of course it will start on four to continue. Let's take it from the top up to there, nice and slow. Uh, one, two, one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, uh, three, four. Uh, one, uh, two, uh, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Amazing. Let's try it a little bit faster. A one, two, one, two, three, four, a 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 one, two, three, four, one. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Beautiful. Now, one more note that I'll add is many times as this was performed, as we take that stamp, toe, step, some people even do a variation where that fingertip touches the ground. One, toe, step, hop, step, hop, step, where it's very like down. One, two. It's almost like a presenting, like, you know, that bow. That's kind of the feel. Eight, one, two, hop, up. But that's kind of an optional thing, and that's more a stylistic choice than a, a choreography choice. Let's do it one more time from the top. Let's go really slow once, and then back up to the same tempo, just so it's really in our heads. A one, two, one, two, three, four, a one, two, a three, four, a one, a two. Make sure there's no weight on that stomp. Stomp, brush, step. Stomp, brush, ball. Change, stomp, brush, step. Stomp, brush, step. Stomp, brush, step. Stomp, brush, ball. Change, stomp, brush, step. Three, toe, step. Hop, step. Hop, step. Out, in. One more time. A one, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Two, now this is where the most common argument is between does this next ex next section start on one or four? Many people had a clap. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I've always learned this as starting on four. So that's where we're going to take it. We just finished one, one, two, three, four, and, or sorry, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So this is stamp, step, stamp, step, stamp, heel, dig, heel, step. One more time. One, take it slow. Stamp, step, stamp, Stamp, heel, dig, heel, step. One more time. One, two, three. Stamp, step, stamp, step, stamp, heel, dig, heel, step. That nice crossover step there. One more time. Stamp, step, stamp, step, stamp, heel, dig, heel, step. And we're going to take the same thing the other side. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So you'll still notice this is still swung. Specifically the break. 
four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Yeah, one, right, left, right. So let's go over a few times again. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three. Let's do this one more time, except we're then going to add the break. One, two, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three. The break sounds like this. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay. The other thing you're going to start to notice, and uh, as we dance through this more, you'll kind of see. Some of us might be a little bit too young to know this or know of this, but when we talk about Motown, we're talking about a record label or a company that re re produced music, uh, specifically through the 60s, 70s, 80s, I believe. Um, that being said, in a lot of those old style things, when you see the people at the microphones kind of singing back up and dancing, you'll have to forgive me because I'm forgetting the person's name but the choreographer was actually a tap dancer, the person that did a lot of Motown choreography for backup singers. And they actually integrated the Shim Sham into a lot of what they did with that. So uh, if you're seeing that with the mic, you might see like a lot of this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, like one, two, and switch, and switch. Ball chains, which if you're looking carefully, you might notice it's here. Yeah, you might also see one of these. And one. Yeah, which is obviously. Yeah, so there's a lot of that that's integrated, and you're going to see that even. Which is our next step. Uh... So you're going to see a lot of that, and even the break. And one, two, three. Three and four, yeah, like, and down, down, step, out, out. There's a lot of that that's integrated, and it's also integrated into um, dancing under, like, swing dance, or, like, traditional jazz dance. I'm not talking, like, Bob Fosse. I'm talking about, like, swing dancing and, like, classic, like, jazz dancing. Um, they actually have their own version of the Shim Sham, too, which doesn't involve any tap steps, of course, but it looks very similar. And if you dance the tap shim sham next to the jazz vernacular shim sham, they look almost identical. So it's kind of neat. Um, with that though, let's try this second part one more time and then we'll move on. A one, two, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, now just the end, stamp. Heel big, heel step. So it's just a little half break there. Just that end. Stamp, heel big, heel step, stamp, heel big, heel step. Again. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two. Same part. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Hold uh, that whole part. Uh, from stamp, step, stamp, step, stamp, heel big, heel step. One, two. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three. Beautiful from the top. Nice and slow first. Or we'll say like at a slow to medium speed and then we'll do it at a medium fast speed. A one, two, a one, two, three, four, a one.
Very, very nice. Let's do it a little bit faster. A one, two, one, two, three, four, 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 one, Let's move on. Now the next time step in this sounds like this. Four, a one, two, a three, four. One, two, 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 three. Okay, let's go over it. This starts with stamp, stamp. Yeah, now this step is referred to as a tack any. Uh, I'm honestly not sure where the name comes from. That's something that I, would sh I should figure out. Anyways, this goes. A4. We're taking brush touch out. Brush touch out. So we don't want to actually put weight on that because then it's going to be harder to step. We want a one, two, a three, four, a one, two, a three. So it's just touch. Now some people would do arms here with a little shimmy. There's some people that will do jazz hands on this part. We're not, we're, I'm going to leave the hands up to you today. I think traditionally it's here. But uh, I don't know. A one, two, a one, two, three, stamp, stamp, brush, touch, stamp. Other foot, brush, touch, stamp. The third one, brush, touch, stamp. The last one is brush, step, brush, step. Yeah, so it's brush, touch, brush, touch, stamp, brush, touch, stamp, brush, touch. One, two, three, four. Brush, touch, stamp, brush, touch, stamp, brush, touch. Stamp, brush, touch, and we repeat again. Stamp, stamp. A one, two, three, four. One, two, three, a four. A one, two, three, four. One, two, three is where it finishes. Why does it finish on count three for that section? Because the break starts on count four, of course. And all of these parts are starting on count four, which means technically, naturally, they would end on count three. Uh, the other thing, too, is we started with the stamp, stamp. So we wouldn't do that at the end again unless we were going to restart. Yes, kind of. Let's do it one more time. One, two, three, a four. A uh, two, one. two, a uh, three, four, a uh, one. Two, a uh, three, and four, and one. Two, a uh, three, four, a uh, one. Two, a uh, three. And four, brush touch, stamp, brush touch, stamp, brush touch. Now this is a step, brush step, and then we take our break. Stamp, toe, step, hop, step, hop, step, toe, in. Beautiful, let's do that one more time with the break. A one, two, one, two, three, a four, a one, two, three, four, one, two, three, a four, a one, two, a three, four, a one, two, a three, a four, one, Four, one, two, three. Beautiful. One more time, a little bit quicker. One, two, one, two, three, four. A one, two, three, four. 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 One, two, break. Seven, four, step, four, step. Amazing. Let's do it from the top up to there. I know we broke like breezed through that section. Uh, but you guys are doing really awesome. Let's take it from the top. Nice and slow, medium speed, uh, slow medium the first time, medium fast the second time. A one, two, one, four. A one, two, a three, four. A one, a two, a three, four. A one, two, a three, four. A one, a two, a three, four. A one, two, a three, four. A one, a two, a break, stamp, go, stamp. Hop, step, hop, step, out, in, cross, over. Two, three, four, one, 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 two, three, cross, one, two, three, four, one, two, touch, the down, go, one, two, three, four. My bad, I can't believe I missed that brush. Well, a one, break, stamp, go, step, hop, step, hop, step, out, in. Good, 
good, good. Let's do it a little quicker. One, two, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four,
is going to come through and click the front heel. Yeah? Traditional arms and open in and out. So that's just a one, two, three, four, or yeah, whatever you need to do. Let's do that part with the ending. One, two, three, four. Just kidding, it starts on one. One, two, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. Beautiful. Now that ending, even if you're going through the repeat, it's still important to know that ending because that's what comes on the next time at the end of the repeat if you're doing it that way. Okay, so let's talk about the repeat now. Actually, let's do the whole thing once and then we'll deal with the repeat. So let's do the whole thing. Uh, for this time, let's say we're doing it with the shave and a haircut at the end. A one, two, uh, let's take it slow, medium first and then medium fast. A one, two, a one, two, three, four. Let's go faster. One, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, the shim sham congratulations now this might be a review for many of us and that's awesome now what happens in the other repeat that's the question that it now begs the other version of this that many would do is dancing it through the first time just like that finishing with Yeah, and then going right back in the start. With one change. Anytime you would do break is now stop time. So it'll sound like this. Four, one, two, three, 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 four, one, two, three. And then we'd go back into it. That happens any time that we would do the traditional stamp, toe, stamp, up, step, up, step, out, in, break. All it is is a stamp on count four, always with the right foot. Let's give it a shot. We're going to work through it slowly. One, two, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three,
three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So this one we do what we normally do because there doesn't have the stamp break. Stamp, feel, dig, feel, step, and four. Power one. Now think what we're going to do. Press that, stomp, two, two, three, four, one, two, three, stamp, step, shuffle, ball change, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now it'll go into the shape uh, of a haircut. Well, it's hard to hit that slow. Hopefully that makes sense. Like I said, uh, it changes a little bit here for, on the tack in. Two, three, four, one, two, three. Instead of a touch on that one, that does become a step. So, actually, it's already a step. Uh, yeah, but uh, so yeah, there's really no change because of that. We just always stamp on four. With uh, that two bar stop time, the big thing is you gotta remember to come back in on the four of the next one. So I think we should just try that a little faster. A one, two, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three. Cool. So that, my friends, is the shim jam. Let's try it two more times before we call it into today's class. Um, Honestly, this is probably one of the most important combinations that you can know as a tap dancer. The number of times, like I cannot count the number of times that I have performed this. Uh, even in professional gigs, there's a lot of times that you show up and like there's not uh, necessarily a lot of information going into the event. They hire a couple tap dancers and they say, okay, this is great. Um, we'll just show up and we'll figure something out. Yeah, you'd be surprised, but it happens a lot. So you gotta show up and they'll like, and most of the time it's like improv based and things like that. But then they'll often say like, especially at the last minute or they'll say, okay, we want one routine choreographed and then we want you to like trade and do like a dueling thing. But then they'll often say, okay, we want another one or something else. And that's when you pull out the shim sham, you pull out the BS chorus, which we're gonna learn on Friday. Um, once again, it'll be like an all levels class. So feel free to come on out, even though it is a little bit harder. Um, so there's a lot of things like that where Honestly, I have performed the Shim Sham and the BS Chorus countless times uh, for different events and, as well as um, for professional performances. Uh, not to mention the fact that it's really, really, really important to kind of keep learning this stuff and we gotta keep all this old, old historical tap dance alive, right? This is where tap dance started, so we wanna keep, it, uh, keep that history maintained while we continue to move forward. Yeah, let's try it once slow. Once fast, and then we'll call it a day. Okay, so this is quite a reasonable speed. We're gonna try it slow. There is the repeat and the stop time. Two, three.
more times. First at a quick tempo, and one more time at a very quick tempo. So we're gonna see how it goes. Uh, before we do it these last couple times, I wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us once again. Uh, I hope you enjoyed learning this. I think it's so important to learn and know historical choreography, because uh, otherwise it just gets lost to the uh, history books, so to speak. And we wanna keep passing it down as much as we can. Uh, yeah, anyways, let's get into it. Good luck. There's a really awkward length introduction to this. It's like a 25 bar introduction. So it goes through 16, then there's an extra eight bars, and then there's like a one bar, one, two, three, four. Yeah, and it's like silence for that bar. So you just kind of have to be ready to jump in. Good luck. It's another version of the same tune, funny enough. Just feel it out. Thank you so much for learning this with me. 